other thing that I wondered, Ram, with this is, let's say you're an SEO agency right now, you've got all your processes set up and you've got your clients already in. How do you transition into moving away from that and towards developing something around AI or trying to take advantage of the opportunities? Great question. Um, something that we teach at, at the Blueprint Training, like our whole, our whole core program and concept there is all about this concept of productization, right? Productization is essentially taking something like an SEO service, an SEO offer that's very complex, you know, million moving pieces, a lot of custom work and distilling it down into something that's simple, scalable, and repeatable, right? That can literally be turned into a product that can be done over and over and over, essentially like an assembly line, right? Part of that is, you know, focusing on the right client and building the right offer, et cetera. But if you want to automate something, it has to be a process. Like I said, AI yet anyways is not can't automate strategy, can't replicate human thinking and new creativity, right? It can only replicate things that have happened before in the past. So if you don't have a system or a process, every client comes in and you're like throwing spaghetti against the wall to see what works. I mean, if you're getting paid top dollar, if you're getting paid, you know, a thousand bucks an hour to do SEO, by all means, like that's how you need to do it. But if we're talking about working with like roofing contractors and lawyers and stuff, that's not that complicated of SEO work. If you don't have a system or a process and you can't automate anything right it's it's just like it's just like now right it's like coming in and trying to put hrefs like trying to use hrefs to automate your seo like it can it's a tool right you can use it to help speed up things but you got to have a system you got to have a process to do that so the, the agencies that are going to understand how to leverage ai you're going to have to have some sort of simple process before it. so that's why we really push this concept of a productized service on our clients of the blueprint training because you know i've been talking about it for years right system processes these are not new business concepts these have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years and they just work you know it just makes your life easier simplifies things streamlines things and once you have that once you're doing the same thing over and over again right once your deliverables are being run the exact same way over and over and over again that's when you can leverage this technology to come in and, and speed or automate so an example that we're using right now is we have you know like phase two of what we do in, in our in our sprint program is like a keyword gap analysis right where we're essentially taking 10 websites pulling into a spreadsheet comparing it to the client website and finding what we call gaps right for like new keyword opportunities we're using AI to basically automate all that, except for the data pools, which comes from via API. It, we're using the technology to group cluster keywords into pillars, into you know silos, etc., and then also to tag it based on intent, right? So as opposed to going through all these things and doing like top funnel, mid funnel, bottom funnel, we've got the API from ChatGPT that we're actually working on getting done, hopefully by next week, to automate that deliverable, all as long as other ones as well. So we have a very simple process that we do for that, right? That literally step by step, and we're able to just layer the technology on top of that once we have that done. But if we're going in and like trying to go into a trust and do key research and then some rush and then like pull stuff from like Google search, like all these different things that like this crazy long process, not even a process, but like just something that's in your head, right? Like you're one of those yeah. SEOs that's like, I know how to do this best. I'm going to do it my way because every time it has to be different because my client wants custom work. It's like, they don't want custom work. They want results. <laughs> they don't give a shit about where you're doing. They don't care about spreadsheets. They don't care about the liberals. They care about you making the money. It goes back to our initial conversation about all this, right? Is that somewhere along the line, SEOs got super obsessed with making the craziest deliverables for other SEOs, as opposed to for what clients want, which is more money in their bank account, more customers, more clients, you know, more results. Anyways, that's how you automate things. That's how you leverage technologies. You got to have systems and processes in place in order to do that. Yeah, that's it. You build the systems and then the people run the systems. And, and that's well, maybe not even the people systems. anymore. You know, that's where, the, that's yeah, where yeah. AI comes into play. You know, we're going to need a lot less people to run these things. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen Alex or Moses video on it, but he talks about how, you know, in the future, you could have AI salespeople or AI account managers. And actually, they probably know better and can answer questions better than most humans, which is interesting as a business owner. I mean, I told I actually watched his video too. He, he went like deep. He was talking about like dating and stuff like that too which again i think that the ai is not anyway i mean depends how deep in the conspiracy they're going to get but like ai is not like taking over for humans yet not in our lifetime right not in our kids lifetimes so there's always going to be an element of human interaction and human engagement right i think that depending on the sale right depending on what you're selling like if you're selling a gym membership absolutely like and that can be ai right if it's simply answering questions if it's whatever but if we're talking about something like an investment portfolio of six figures and up, then I'm probably going to want to talk to a human, understand it for myself, understand the tech, like whatever that looks like, even though they'll probably be using AI at that point all the time. So I did watch a video. I thought it was good. I thought he he had some very interesting takes on things like he always does. But yeah, I mean, I totally agree that like AI is going to 
I think when you start to look at it industry by industry too, because right now we're only talking from the scope of marketing. But again, I look at, we work with a lot of law firms. I look at law firms um, and it's not just going to disrupt things from a, a little background. There's actually a huge problem in this country when it comes to attorneys, because a lot of people are like, oh, I'm gonna go to law school because I make a lot of money as an attorney. And what's happened is that created a huge backlog between people graduating with a law degree and getting barred versus being able to actually find work because there's just not enough work uh, for attorneys. So there's this huge backlog already of attorneys who don't have work which is already a sign of a problem, right? Okay. Now you throw in the fact that a lot of junior attorneys only get hired to do discovery work, research, very, very tedious work like you see on TV shows, right? Working long hours, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. That should be automated. But there's something else that's happening now too. There's a company called Do Not Pay. It's a, it's a basically AI robot lawyer. And they're offering a brilliant PR campaign, by the way, that this company, the CEO of this company, he, they're offering a million dollars cash to anybody who has a Supreme Court case to let them argue the case for them. So what they're going to do is they're going to give you a pair of AirPods, put it in, and you literally just repeat verbatim what the AI says to you to argue your case. So it's not just coming for the grunt work at the bottom. It's coming for your book of business too. Like it's come for your clients. Like people are no longer going to go to an attorney now. This is what I'm saying. Like pray this principle is like one of the most fascinating it's 80 20 principle right yeah 20 percent of inputs drive 20 percent of 80 percent of outputs it's, it's a fascinating principle that resoundingly is true in nature and humans and a lot of things Everywhere. and i think it applies here too i think that ai what it's going to do we're going to see a Pareto's principle of like 20 percent driving 80 percent right so like i think that 20 percent of law firms are going to survive <laughs> and like the other 80 percent for like you know I, I talked to a lot of attorneys too i had a, a, a sales call yesterday with a probate attorney and he's like yeah 90 percent of the leads that i get they're just tire kickers i'm like bang that's where ai comes in you know what i'm saying like attorneys aren't going to want to deal with this all these tire kickers that come in so you know we'll just pass it off to an ai attorney like here's ai handle it right contracts right wills you know, handle disputes, all that stuff. So it's coming for like their book of business too, which is kind of fascinating if you think about it. So I think that's where it, things start to get like really, really interesting is when you start to apply what we know as marketers here and what we know about AI to specific industries, right? That's when it's like a little bit overwhelming almost because, you know, I was talking to my friend yesterday who owns a gym and I'm like, have you seen this thing chat GPT? He's like, no, I'm like, watch this. I'm like, give me a 12 week workout plan, focus on legs, you know, throw in a workout plan. I want to, I want to get a six pack in there too. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm 210 pounds. Like how can I lose 15 pounds? Like he's like, oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, like I guarantee by the end of this year, you're going to see a startup that's going to be taking this, taking this technology and layering it on industries, a fitness app that's run by AI, that's giving you everything you need from like, it's going to kind of eviscerate the need for trainers in a sense. Again, there will still be a need for humans because there's a level of accountability that you need to get in shape. Right. But again, like taking this knowledge and applying it to specific industries, I think is where it starts to get really, really, really interesting. And really, again, like I said, a little bit overwhelming almost if you're in those businesses, because we are talking about it here, but like, damn, you have a gym and you, you need to be on top of this stuff, bro. Like this is, this is coming for you. This is coming for your business. This is coming from your income. This is coming for your family, dude. This is coming for the food on your table. <laughs> It's happening a lot faster than you think, you know, pay attention for sure.